Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 6.12 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Uh, if I go too fast, you can always rewind and be sure to share with your friends if you like what you're seeing. So, um, if we put a dipole, a magnetic dipole, into a magnetic field, and for simplicity's sake, we're going to deal with a, a square ring with current going around this. And we're going to align it such that the magnetic field is pointing up while the ring is aligned kind of at an angle like that with it. So uh, the angle is going to be here. So let's draw the, why am I using that pin? Let's draw the horizontal here. So this is the angle theta that that magnetic dipole is going to sit at. And of course it has a magnetic moment, um, pointing like that, the M vector. And so we can calculate the forces on this this uh, the square, the two edges that are that we can actually see that we're not looking at point on, we're looking at edge on. So the current flows down, magnetic field is up. So you go, um, you cross the current in the magnetic field, you get a force pointing towards you for the one closest to you, and for the one farther away, you know QB cross B, you get a force pointing into the page. So these two forces cancel each other out. Um, it might tend to stretch the dipole, but it doesn't do much else. Um, the force on the the current uh, that's above here and down here going into and out of the page. So when it comes out of the page, you QV cross B, so you get a force pointing to the right. There's a red pin for that. So we get a little force pointing this way. And then down here we get a force pointing that way. Okay. So if we add up the forces, uh, we, we calculate the torque. So the torque is just, uh, that's just the sum of R cross F. So we have R cross F and R cross F. Well, this is, you know, one half of this side times F times the angle there. So we get um, the normal vector is going to be, uh, there's two of these guys, two of the one halves. So we just get S, the side, the length of the side there, um, times the force, times sine theta. And that's going to point out of the page um, towards you. So I'm going to draw out of the page towards you. Okay? And um, for the force, what's the force? Well, that's just QB cross B the, um, times a the length there. So it's I times a length. So we get uh, the current times a length of that thing. Well, here, it, what he does is he has this one is like side one and this one is side two. So this is side one is the one you're looking at here. Side two is the length of it going into or out of the page. And then uh, it's the magnetic field B. That's the force there. So we put those together equals I side one, side two, B sine theta pointing out of the page. And uh, you'll notice that the magnetic moment is just the area, side one times side two, times the current. So that's just MB pointing out of the page. Well, this is just the formula for the cross product of M and B. Because B cross M, that angle between there is the same as the angle down there. Okay? So, but this is only in when you have uniform B. If, uni if B, B vector weren't, ve weren't uh, uniform, you wouldn't get this result. Um, because you know the, the B vector, the forces would be different at each of these points, and there may even be forces that don't cancel each other in the sides that you're looking at. So this is a formula. Let me box this. This formula looks an awfully lot like the parallel when we looked at um, electrostatics and matter. Okay. So um, the other interesting thing is this has the tendency to align the magnetic moment with the B field. And so that will give you a paramagnetic response. It'll basically increase the magnetic field within the matter so that it aligns with the, the B vector um, according to how the B vector acts. Um, so that's paramagnetic uh, reaction there. So when do you see this in nature? Um, this is the case when you have electrons. And a good way to think of electrons, this isn't completely true, but a good way to think of an electron is it's a sphere that rotates around. Okay, 
And so your electron could be rotating one way or the other. Um, the Pauli, the Pauli, uh, Pauli exclusion principle from quantum mechanics says that at each energy level, um, you can only have up to two electrons. Okay, one spin up and one spin down. Um, you can't have two that are spin up, right? And so the rule is that when you have an odd number of electrons, you tend to get paramagnetic material. Um, if you have an even number of electrons, then you're going to basically get um, no alignment. There's no paramagnetic. Um, there's no paramagnetic. This is a general rule of thumb. There's some um, some things that don't agree with this rule. And this this is true for atoms. It's also true for molecules because molecules. You really have to think of molecules as you know the electrons have a more complicated configuration in the clouds, but still they occupy the same energy levels with one with spin up, one with spin down, um, if there's an even number. Okay? So also note that in a uniform magnetic field, the net force, there's no you know, thing pulling the, the dipole in any direction. Okay? Uh, for non-uniform magnetic fields, how am I doing on time here? Um, we'll cover non-uniform magnetic materials next.